Step 3. Aero braking and landing. Despite having less gravity, the thin atmosphere on Mars results in a terminal velocity 5 times higher than on Earth, which means the landing burn has to be approximately 5 times longer. Even so, by using the Martian atmosphere to slow down, our engines only have to provide 14 kilometers per second of delta V to get to Mars. The Moon doesn't have an atmosphere to slow down against, so getting there would require the engines to provide the full 15 kilometers per second of delta V needed for the mission. So this is why it takes less propellant to get to Mars. When using friction in a planet's atmosphere to slow down, it's necessary to strike a balance between your current speed and the density of the atmosphere you're aerobraking in. The faster you're traveling, the thinner the atmosphere needs to be to prevent overheating. Only once you've slowed down can you afford to sink deeper into the planet's atmosphere where the air is more dense. Aerobraking in the Martian atmosphere is a unique challenge. Not just because the atmosphere is thin, but also because the planet's smaller. Atmospheres are spherical, so from the ship's perspective, they appear to curve away from you as you travel in a straight line. On Mars, the smaller size of the planet means the curve of the atmosphere is much tighter. If Starship can't follow the curve when aerobraking, then it'll gain altitude, where it won't be able to generate sufficient lift or drag. This will result in it flying past the planet without stopping. It may seem strange that a lack of lift would cause Starship to gain altitude, when a lack of lift for an airplane would result in it losing altitude. The difference is, an airplane uses lift to offset the pull of gravity, whereas Starship plans to come in upside down so that way the lift generated can supplement the pull of gravity. SpaceX has provided a visualization of Starship using lift to stay on course, where the lift vector points downwards, toward the planet, to help follow the curve of the atmosphere. Starship is relatively high drag for the amount of lift it generates, so there's an upper limit to how much lift it can produce without creating too much drag. Higher drag means higher heat and structural loads, which could easily lead to vehicle failure. With Mars, it's particularly challenging to maintain a balance between lift, drag, heat shield load, and structural load. If Starship aero breaks too high in the atmosphere, it won't be able to generate enough lift to follow the curvature of the planet, and will fail to capture into orbit. But if it aero breaks too low, it will burn up or break up in the atmosphere. On Earth, the curve of the atmosphere is much shallower and the helping hand of gravity is stronger, so a Starship can more easily stay at the optimal altitude to minimize peak heating and structural loads. In summary, although it takes more energy to get to Mars than to the Moon, it actually takes less propellant thanks to the clever use of aerobraking in the Martian atmosphere. The trajectory you take can have a large impact on your approach velocity though, so let's see how fast we can get to Mars before aerobraking becomes too difficult. A typical home and transfer to Mars begins with a heliocentric velocity of 33 kilometers per second. But as a spacecraft climbs the sun's gravity well, it slows down to only 21 kilometers per second. Mars orbits the sun at 24 kilometers per second, so the spacecraft has to approach from the front and let Mars catch up to it. The difference in velocity between the spacecraft and Mars, known as the approach velocity, is what has to be corrected for by the aerobraking maneuver. In this case, a home and transfer leads to an atmospheric entry at 3 kilometers per second. As discussed, the average home and transfer to Mars requires 260 days to accomplish. You could get to Mars in just 180 days by traveling 1 km per second faster. Or with even more propulsion, you could get there in as little as 120 days. But this extra velocity makes it harder to land safely on arrival. You might think the extra velocity would make it easier to land on Mars, since on arrival your speed would be more similar to Mars's. But faster routes to Mars actually lead to larger approach velocities. This is because the home and transfer to Mars is unique in the fact that the velocity vectors of the spacecraft and Mars are pointing in the same direction when they meet in Mars's orbit. On shortened transits, the velocity vectors point in slightly different directions, and this difference increases the more the trip is shortened. Even a slight angle can make a huge difference when dealing with velocities above 20 kilometers per second. So the more you shorten your transit to Mars, the faster your approach velocity becomes and the more difficult it is to aerobrake safely. SpaceX's Starship is designed to survive Mars entry at 7.5 km per second. Should a desired transit length lead to an approach velocity larger than this, there are two options. The transit can be adjusted to more closely resemble a home and transfer, which will lengthen the travel time but reduce the approach velocity, or a propulsive maneuver can be used on Mars arrival to slow down to 7.5 km per second before entering the atmosphere. Slowing down propulsively on arrival would require bringing significant amounts of additional propellant, which would drastically reduce the mission's cargo capacity. The most efficient way to slow down propulsively is with staging, where excess ship components are discarded before landing and only the essentials are brought to the planet. By reducing the mass of the lander this way, a small amount of propellant can accomplish large velocity changes. Staging during Mars arrival won't be an option for Starship though, since it plans to be 100% reusable. 
The time frames and Delta V figures used in this video are averages for the purpose of illustrating the basic differences between mission architectures. In reality, the characteristics of a journey to Mars are slightly different for every launch window, since the orbits of Earth and Mars are different in their eccentricities and inclinations. 